A very good morning students. In today's class, I will be taking up a few more numericals on the Faraday's first law of electrolysis. Now let me revamp quickly what we have done for Faraday's first law. Charge on an electron is 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. Therefore, if you want one mole of electrons, the charge automatically becomes 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 multiplied by one mole of electrons. So you require the average address number. This value actually comes out to be 96487 coulombs. But we round it off to 96500 as a value which is accepted. During the electrolysis process, current of DC is used through the electrodes into a solution and we have some depositions happening onto the electrodes. On the cathode, we have some depositions and the mass of this deposition can be calculated on the basis of the first law which states that the weight deposited depends on the charge passed. Charge is represented as Q and the value of Q you know is current into the time in seconds. So the amount of current that is passed through the cell into the time in seconds. So the weight deposited is proportional to Q and there is a proportionality constant given as Z which is the electrochemical equivalent. This electrochemical equivalent can be easily calculated by equivalent weight of the element divided by Faraday. The Faraday as we've already done is 96500 coulombs. So the formula that we end up in is atomic mass divided by N which is your equivalent weight. Where what is N? N refers to the charge on the metal ion or it may also refer to the change in oxidation state during a chemical process multiplied by Faraday. Substituting this value for Z in your first law, of the first law of Faraday's, we end up with weight deposited is equal to atomic mass multiplied by the current in amperes multiplied by time in seconds divided by N and F. Their N would depend on the element that you are depositing and atomic mass is also for the element which is deposited. Time, mind you, is in seconds and F stands for 96500. We'll do a few quantitative questions to get the knack of the Faraday's law. The first question that we are doing is calculate the amount of charge in Faraday's and also in Coulomb's for the following depositions. Now, if I'm talking about magnesium, we very well know if magnesium is deposited, the reaction that is happening at the cathode would be this. Which means if I want one mole of magnesium deposited, I would require two moles of electrons. One mole of magnesium refers to 24 grams or you have 24 grams requires two moles of electrons. So if you have want only one mole of magnesium, one mole mg would require two moles electrons or which is equal to two Faraday's and that is one part of the question. Two Faraday's if you want it in coulombs this value would also be equal to 2 into 96500 coulombs becomes your answer in coulombs. Moving to the second part of calcium. For calcium we know calcium has got the charge of calcium 2 positive. It would accept two electrons to become calcium solid which would be deposited. Since you are given question as for 8 grams of calcium, the question is no more for moles, so you need to convert your moles into grams also. From the given equation, we very well know that you would require for 1 mole calcium, you need 2 Faraday's of charge. 1 mole of calcium is equal to 40 grams of calcium. 40 grams of calcium needs 2 Faraday's, therefore 8 grams will require how much? The value becomes 2 divided by 40 multiplied by 8 is your answer in Faraday's. Also, if you want the same answer in Coulomb's, the value becomes 2 multiplied by 8 in the numerator divided by 40. You can simplify your answer and you need to multiply it by 96500 Coulomb's to get the answer in Coulomb's. So, for the answer in Coulomb's, you need to multiply it by Faraday's constant. Moving to the third part of the question, which states,
one mole of MnO4 minus has to transform into Mn2 positive. To do this particular question, we need the equation. MnO4 minus goes to Mn2 plus. Let's balance this first. We balance the oxygen atoms. For four oxygen atoms, you require water. Four molecules. While you put four molecules of water, you also get eight hydrogens, which are to be balanced by means of H plus. So you require eight H plus. Balancing the charge. For charge, you can see you got eight plus and one minus, which means a total of seven plus on the left hand side. Whereas you have only got a 2 plus on the right hand side. To balance it out, you would require to add up electrons. 7 plus on this side, 2 plus on this side. Electrons being negative in charge, if I add 5 electrons here, the charge left here would be 2. Because it was originally 7 plus and now you have 5 electrons added to it. So the 5 minus charges are added. So your net charge here becomes 2 plus and 2 plus is the charge here. So this is your balanced chemical equation which you require for your numerical. As you can see, KMnO4, the MnO4 of the KMnO4 is 1 mole. For 1 mole of MnO4, you require 5 electrons. So the question was for 1 mole of MnO4 to Mn2 positive, which normally happens only in an acidic medium and that is what I have used. MnO4 minus goes to Mn2 plus, you require 5 electrons per molecule of MnO4 minus. So if you have one mole of MnO4 minus, your requirement would be five moles of electrons, which would be equal to five Faradays. That is the answer in Faradays. And if you require the same answer in Coulombs, the answer would be five into 96500 Coulombs becomes your answer. So that was the qualitative aspect. We'll do one more question of the Faraday's first law to drill the concept a little better. This question is for copper deposition. Let us have a look at the question first. That's the question. The question says, if you have a current of one point, sorry, 0 0.1287 amperes, is passed for 50 minutes through copper sulfate solution. You have to calculate the charge passed. That is, you need to find out the value of Q and the mass of copper deposited. That is, you require the value of W. Now, Q, you very well know from the information that we have, is equal to I into T. So, multiplying it, what is the current required? That is it. 0 0.1287 was the current multiplied by time. Time becomes 50. You cannot stop here. The time was given in minutes. Your requirement is in seconds. So don't forget, you need to put a 60 there. This value, when you multiply by 60 and your final answer you would get is 386.1. I've used a calculator. You can verify the answer. So you need to multiply your current with your time in seconds to get the charge. The second part of the question is, you require the mass of copper deposited. That was the first part. Talking about the second part. Let us substitute the values from the first law of Faraday. The weight deposited is given by equivalent weight into I into T divided by Faraday's. Substituting my values, you require weight deposited. So this is to be found. You require the atomic mass. Atomic mass of copper is given to you. So this value is 63.5. N is the valency which is plus 2. Let us look at 2. Faraday is 96500 coulombs. Time is given as 50 minutes which we already converted into seconds in this part. I is equal to 0.1287. The same thing can also be written as W is equal to M by NF into Q. And Q you have calculated already. So your weight deposited can be written as substituting Q from here. Atomic mass is 63.5 divided by 2 into 96500 multiplied by 
Q, the value is 386.1 and you get your weight deposited which comes out to be 0.127 grams after doing these calculations. So I have redrilled the Faraday's first law for the weight deposited by through this particular example. With this, I close the topic of Faraday's first law. Thank you kids.